Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is grade three, weather and climate. This lesson is 3.4, what's going on with the weather, part one. For this lesson, you won't need any at-home materials. You'll just need to follow along with me and bring your thinking science brain. Can you do that? I bet you can. Are you ready to do some science today? Sweet, let's go. All right, welcome back. Do you remember what we did in the last lesson? We looked at graphs. How did looking at these bar graphs of temperature and precipitation data help us understand the weather in Anchorage, Alaska and St. Petersburg, Russia? Think back about it and tell me what you think. Yeah, looking at graphs, especially bar graphs, help us to understand patterns in the weather. So for example, when we looked at this average high temperature in St. Petersburg, Russia over a year, we could see that the pattern was low temperature, high temperature, low temperature. And when we look at the precipitation, we can see a pattern of low precipitation, high precipitation, low precipitation. And that helps us figure out patterns and seasons, which is a really important part of weather. Awesome. Do you think bar graphs and climate patterns might be helpful in figuring out which of the three islands would be best for the orangutan reserve? Yeah, I think so too. I hope we can get some climate data across many years for all three islands. Then we could compare them and see which one would have the best weather over the long range for the orangutans. That would be really helpful. So today we're gonna read a book about a girl who moves from Boston to San Francisco. She has a lot of questions about the weather in both places, so she uses bar graphs to compare the climates. Now you might be asking me, Scientist Kate, why are we gonna read a book today? Well, that's because one of the things scientists do to learn more information and gather evidence to support their arguments is they read. So we're gonna be reading like scientists today. And this book, like I said, is about a girl who moves from Boston to San Francisco. And the weather in those two places is really different. So do you know where Boston and San Francisco are on a map? It's okay if you don't, I'm gonna show you. Look at this map. Do you know what this is a map of? Yeah, it's the United States of America. So. Here's Boston, way over here on the East Coast. San Francisco is way over here on the West Coast in California. Boston is in the state of Massachusetts, by the way. So the, um, the narrator, the character in this story, the main character, she moved from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way across the United States to San Francisco, California. And y'all, these two places have very different weather. And you might be asking yourself, how would scientist Kate know anything about this? Well, actually, I have a connection to this story. I just moved across the United States too. Do you remember that I live in Seattle, Washington? I moved from Baltimore, Maryland, which is way over here on the East Coast near, near where um, Boston is. I moved all the way across the United States to Seattle. And y'all, the weather in Baltimore and Seattle are very, very different. So I can't wait to read this story because I think I'm gonna have a real connection to this character. So while we read, we're gonna discuss the bar graphs throughout the book and we're going to visualize what the information in each graph tells us about the climate of that place. So throughout the story, there will be bar graphs and we are going to study them together. Are you ready? Let's read. As we read, I want you to make sure to stop and discuss each graph. So we're going to stop and finger trace each, the shape of each graph and describe the climate that it represents. So we're gonna do that. Okay, ready? <clears throat> me, 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 me. Toby's family just moved all the way across the country. They used to live in Boston, Massachusetts. Now her family lives in San Francisco, California. Toby, her brother Max, their mom and their dog, arrived in San Francisco in the middle of July. Toby was really surprised when she got out of the moving van in front of their new apartment building. It was cloudy and kind of cold. Cold, she said, in July? What's going on? 
Before arriving in San Francisco, Toby thought the weather was always hot in July, no matter where you were. In Boston, she wore shorts all summer long. The last weather report she heard before she left Boston said that the temperature was 84 degrees Fahrenheit. That was hot for sure. Toby asked her brother what he thought the temperature was right now in San Francisco. Max found a thermometer hanging outside their apartment building. It said 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, thought Toby, that's a big difference. What's going on? Lots of things were different about San Francisco. Of course, there was a new city to learn about and new people to meet, but the weather was the thing that surprised Toby the most. As Toby helped her family open the boxes in their new apartment, she made sure she found some warm clothes as quickly as she could. I'll need these, she thought. She predicted that the weather would get warmer in a day or two, but it didn't. Every day she went outside and felt the temperature of the air and looked at the sky. Every time it was still cool, still cloudy. Is it cool and cloudy all the time in San Francisco? Toby wondered. She hoped not. She decided to find out. First, she asked Max, but he wasn't sure. He thought they should look online for San Francisco weather data. Maybe that would help them figure out what was going on. Max and Toby looked online to find temperature data for San Francisco. They had to look in a few different ways, but finally they found a graph that showed the average high temperature for each month of the year in San Francisco. Toby and Max found the coldest and warmest months of the year on the graph. The data showed that September and October were the warmest months. Toby was glad to find out that September and October were probably going to be warmer than July and August. But when she looked more closely, she saw that the bars for September and October were only a little bit higher than the bars for July and August. In fact, the graph showed that the temperature didn't change much from month to month in San Francisco. That's strange, Toby thought. Now let's stop right here and visualize the data in this graph. So do you remember the graphs for Anchorage, Alaska, and St. Petersburg, Russia? Show me with your hand what shape the pattern of the bars made. Yeah, it went like this, like a hill. And then back down again, right? So low and then high and then low. So let's look at this temperature data. Get your tracing finger ready and let's trace the outline of the bars on this graph. Ready? Here we go. Hmm. Do you see a big hill like we saw in the other data? Not really. There's a little bit of a rise in September and October, which is what the text tells us. But are September and October that much warmer than, say, November and December? No. They're maybe only about 10 or 15 degrees warmer. So the shape, again, goes like this. Yeah, it's, it's not a huge hill like we're used to seeing. So that tells us that the weather in San Francisco, does it change a lot through the seasons? No, it stays kind of almost the same through the seasons. Interesting. Toby thought about living in Boston and packing away her shorts and sandals in September each year. She thought of the hats, gloves, and boots she wore all winter long. In Boston, it was always hot in the summer and cold in the winter. It looked like the pattern of temperature was different in San Francisco. Did that mean she would never need her warmest clothes? She decided to find a temperature graph for Boston so she could look at it next to the graph of, for San Francisco. Then she'd be able to compare the patterns. Ooh, Toby, you little scientist, you. She's gonna compare, which is one thing that scientists love to do. So, do you think there's gonna be a difference in the weather pattern that Toby sees in Boston and in San Francisco? Let's find out. Toby saw that even though San Francisco was colder than Boston in July, it was much warmer than Boston in December. 
So let's look at Boston. This is Boston on the top. Are you ready to get your tracing finger going? Let's do it. Ooh. So the pattern goes way up and then way down. So what about in San Francisco? Do we see that same big hill? No, it's just kind of like a little bit, a little tiny hill. All right. Maybe I'll be able to play soccer outdoors this winter, she said to herself. Toby loved soccer and especially liked playing on a grass field. In Boston, she could never play soccer outside in the winter. It was always too cold and sometimes snowy too. But the temperature graph for San Francisco gave her evidence that San Francisco winters are warm enough for outside soccer. Hmm, that sounds good. A few weeks later, Toby noticed that some days had been warmer than when she first arrived but there had been many cool days too. She also noticed it hadn't rained the whole month they had lived in San Francisco. That's strange, she thought. We always had a few thunderstorms in the summer in Boston. Is it ever gonna rain in San Francisco? She decided to look at more weather data to find the answer to her new question. Toby and Max looked up data about the amount of precipitation in San Francisco. Let's take a look at the graph. The graph showed that there was hardly any precipitation in San Francisco during June, July, and August. Max said that when San Fran uh, Max said that when there's a lot less precipitation during one part of the year, people call it a dry season. San Francisco's dry season was in the summer, and its wet season was in the winter. Toby was pretty sure that the pattern of precipitation was different in Boston. However, she needed evidence to make sure she was right. Ooh, Toby out here using evidence. What a scientist, I love it. Max and Toby found a new graph showing precipitation data for Boston. Toby looked at the two graphs. The Boston data showed that there was precipitation in the summer. In fact, she noticed there was some precipitation all year in Boston. The bars on the Boston graph were all about the same height. The amount of precipitation hardly changed from month to month. So there was no wet season or dry season in Boston. That was Boston's pattern of precipitation. So let's compare the graphs. On the top, we see Boston. Do you see a dry period in Boston where there's not really any rain? No, there's rain in Boston every single month. What about San Francisco? Take a look at the graph for San Francisco. Do you see that there's a dry season? Yeah, in June, July, and August, right here, we see that the precipitation goes way down. So Toby knew that in Boston, there was rain in the warm part of the year and snow in, cold, in the cold part of the year. Since San Francisco never got very cold, did that mean it would rain in December instead of snowing? Toby was happy. Not only would she be able to play soccer outside in the winter, she also predicted that she would be able to play more often in the summer because it didn't rain as much in the summer in San Francisco, fewer games would be called off. I'm glad I figured out what's going on, she said to Max. Now I wonder, does the rest of California have the same weather as San Francisco? Toby still had many more questions about weather patterns. Would it ever snow in San Francisco? What about in other parts of California? Was the weather by the ocean cold or warm? Could she go swimming all year? She wanted to know more about what was going on with the weather. She didn't have all the answers to these questions yet. To answer some of them, she would need new data, but she knew that she could find the answers if she wanted to. All right, so we learned something really interesting here in part one of this lesson. We learned that weather and climate are different in different places. So on the East Coast in Boston, where Toby was living, she experienced really cold, snowy winters and really hot, rainy summers, but the weather was totally different in San Francisco. I experienced the same thing when I moved to Seattle from Baltimore. In Baltimore, like Boston, there's cold, snowy winters and hot, humid summers that have thunderstorms. Since moving to Seattle, I've really experienced some beautiful, nice weather that doesn't change so much throughout the year. So I'm really excited 
to talk more about this story in our next part of our lesson. Thanks for joining me for this book today, and I'll see you next time for part two. Stay safe, stay curious. Bye. Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is grade three, weather and climate. Lesson 3.4, what's going on with the weather, part two. What's the weather like where you are today? Here in Seattle, it's sunny and warm. I even have my door open right now, so you may hear some birds chirping or maybe even a lawnmower during this lesson. For this part of the lesson, you won't need any materials from home. Just follow along with me. Are you ready to do some science? I bet you are. Let's go. Okay, welcome back. Do you remember what we did in the first part of the lesson? We read this book. It's called What's Going On With The Weather? And it's about a girl named Toby who is moving from Boston, Massachusetts, all the way over to San Francisco, California. So she moved all the way across the country. And she finds out that the weather in these two places is very different. In Boston, she had cold, snowy winters. But after looking at some weather data with her brother, she figures out that San Francisco doesn't have those extreme highs and lows like Boston does. So she can play soccer all year round. So she's very excited about the weather that she's expecting to get in San Francisco. So now we're gonna compare the weather in Boston to the weather in San Francisco by pulling the graphs from the book and looking at them a little closer. This is gonna help us understand more about the climate in the different places. Do you remember what climate is? Tell me. Yeah, climate is the weather in a place over a very long period of time. So if we take a lot of weather data from many years and we look at the patterns of highs and lows and rainy and dry, then we can discover the climate in a place. And by studying the climate is how we're gonna figure out what the best island is for the orangutans in this unit. So let's get back to Boston and San Francisco. I wanna remind you that when most people talk about seasons, they mean like summer, fall, winter, and spring, right? Like if you were talking to a kindergartner about seasons, they would tell you those are the seasons. But we're thinking like meteorologists right now. And meteorologists think about temperature and precipitation when they talk about seasons. So from this point on, we're going to refer to seasons by temperature and precipitation. What words do meteorologists meteorologists use to describe different seasons? Give me some responses that you're thinking of. Are you stuck? I'll give you one. Rainy season might be a word that meteorologists would use to describe one specific season. Can you think of some others? Great ideas. Here are the ones I thought of. The dry season, the cold season, and the hot season. So remember, when we're talking about seasons like meteorologists, we're gonna to refer to them by talking about precipitation, like these two, rainy or dry, or we're gonna talk about seasons using temperature, like hot and cold. Awesome. So let's start with Boston. Boston is the city in Massachusetts that Toby moved from. And Boston has a warm season, which is in June, July, and August. So let's take a look at the graph over here. Do you see June, July, and August? Point to those three months. Do you see that their bars are higher than the rest of the months? So we can tell that that is the warm season. Perfect. Now, does Boston have any cold seasons? See if you can find some places in the graph where the bars are lower. Yeah, January, February and March all look pretty cold. And then over here in November and December, we're seeing those lower temperatures. So Boston does have cold seasons. Awesome. We see that there's cold seasons and warm seasons. Now, this is the graph for San Francisco, which is in California, and it's where Toby moved to. Look at the graph. The pattern looks a lot different. Does San Francisco have warm and cold seasons? I'll give you a minute to look and think. What do you think? 
San Francisco's graph looks a lot different than Boston's. Boston's goes like this. And San Francisco's kind of goes like this, right across the top. So do you see any major differences that would show us a warm or cold season in San Francisco's data? No. Awesome. Now, we've looked at the temperature. Now let's look at the precipitation, which is the other way that meteorologists talk about climate. So we see over here on the left, total precipitation in Boston. I just want you to trace the top of those bars with your finger. Are you ready? I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, now I want you to look at the total precipitation in San Francisco and trace those bars with your finger. Are you ready? Which of these two looks like it would have a really rainy season and a really dry season, Boston or San Francisco? San Francisco does, because it has some places where the bars are high and some places where the bars are very low. And that is evidence that there is a rainy season and a dry season. What month appears to be the driest in San Francisco? Can you find it? Yeah, it's July. It looks like it almost doesn't rain at all in July in San Francisco. Look at Boston's precipitation. When we trace it, we see that there's not really a month where there's no rain. It either rains or snows pretty close to the same amount every single month, and we don't see a big dip in precipitation like we do in San Francisco. So that makes sense that Toby would really feel like San Francisco's weather and climate are very different from Boston. All right, we have a new word. It may be a word that you already have in your vocabulary, but I want to give it a new meaning. Instead of summer, spring, winter, fall, when we think of seasons, I want to think of seasons as times of year when certain kinds of weather are more common. Seasons help us describe the climate of a place. San Francisco and Boston have different seasons, so we can say that San Francisco's climate is different from Boston's climate. Do you agree? Great. Bar graphs help meteorologists compare seasons and climates in different places and make predictions, which is what meteorology is all about. What are the features of the climate where you live? Think about it for a minute. When is it rainy? When is it dry? Hmm, when is it cold? When is it warm? If you live on the East Coast in a place like New York or Florida or North Carolina, you would probably know that you're expecting to have really hot summers, maybe with thunderstorms. And in the winter, you're gonna get cold winters. You might get snow. You might have to really bundle up. If you live in a place like I live, which is near San Francisco, it's up a little higher, which is Seattle, we're gonna have a climate that's more like San Francisco's. We might expect rain more throughout the year, and we might not expect to see such highs and lows in temperature. Have you ever lived in or visited a different climate? If so, how is it different from your climate? Have you ever been to a place that was really tropical or really cold? Think about that and compare it to the climate you live in. We're gonna to continue to compare climates in other parts of the world because this is gonna help prepare us to decide which island has the best climate for the orangutan reserve, which is the point of this whole science unit. Thanks so much for joining me for part two of lesson 3.4, what's going on with the weather. I want you to challenge yourself to be thinking about the weather where you live. Ask an adult who lives in your house to help you find out what the weather's going to be in the next few days coming up. Is that weather that you would expect for the season that we're in right now? Or is it unusual weather? Hmm. Think about it. Until then, I want you to stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you next time. Bye.